Hi guys, it's Mr. Pollock Biology here once again for an AS Level Unit 1 video. This uh, little video is going to talk you through how cholera or Vibrio cholera uh, causes disease. So here's our objectives. You're going to describe Vibrio cholerae as a model prokaryote and you're going to explain how the cholera toxin causes diarrhea. So here's a diagram of a typical prokaryotic cell. Uh, prokaryote incidentally means before the nucleus or before the kernel. Um, the kernel being the nucleus itself, um, and most prokaryotes will have the following structures. They have loose DNA uh, arranged in sort of a nucleoid region, which is quite a dense region of chromatin in the centre of the cell. Uh, they will also have ribosomes, although these are a slightly different type of ribosomes to those found in, uh, in eukaryotic cells. Some prokaryotes have a flagellum to help them be motile and move through their environment. Um, they also have a cell wall, which is not made of cellulose. It's made of this stuff called peptidoglycan, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, they have a cell membrane. Uh, they have Some of them have plasmids, uh, which are circular rings of DNA that they can pass to one another in horizontal gene transfer, but that's not something you need to worry about just yet for Unit 1. Um, they have a slime capsule that they secrete this horrible slimy goop around themselves that helps them to slip and slide around the environment. Also protects them from uh, things like stomach acid so they can get through uh, to your small intestines. Uh, they also have these things called pili or conjugation tubes which are involved in horizontal gene transfer which is something for another video. Um, so that's the general structure of a prokaryote. Uh, here's the guy we're interested in though. This is Vibrio cholerae. Uh, this is the guy that causes cholera. Um, so as a disease, cholera is a pretty nasty thing. It causes extreme dehydration. It's transmitted via the fecal oral route, so ingesting uh, solid human waste. Um, and it's prevalent because of this in areas of overcrowding or poor sanitation. Um, and between 3 and 5 million people are infected with cholera every single year, resulting in around 100,000 deaths every year. But how does cholera cause a disease? Uh, well, cholera uh, releases a toxin, um, and it acts in the lumen of the small intestines, or on the epithelial cells of the small intestines. Uh, and what's going to happen, um, we need to put some bits and bobs on this diagram, so let's put some chloride ions, some cholera toxin, and some H2O onto this. Uh, the cholera toxin itself is going to cause chloride ion channels to open, like so. Once those chloride, channel, chloride ion channels are open, chloride ions are going to rush out from the epithelial cells into the lumen of the small intestines. Uh, the result of this is the water potential of the lumen of the small intestine is made significantly more negative than the water potential of the epithelial cells. Therefore, water will move out from the epithelial cells into the lumen of the small intestine via osmosis. And what does this cause? Well, this causes massive amounts of water to be lost in the feces, uh, in the in you're essentially down the toilet. Um, you can lose up to five liters of water per day. But how do we replace this and how do we treat cholera? Well, that's a topic for another video. So uh, if you click the card just above here, that'll take you to that. If it's not ready yet, I'm sorry, but it's on its way. Um, but to summarize how cholera causes disease, well, cholera is caused by Vibrio cholerae. Uh, v. cholerae is a typical prokaryote. And basically what happens is chloride ion channels are opened, which causes a reduction in the water potential of the lumen of the small intestine and water is lost by osmosis. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.